What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of Unapologetically Christians. It's me, Ricky Jones Jury, and I'm also excited because the guest of today is not a guest to this channel, not a guest to this podcast, one in which we've had many conversations together. Uh-huh. And on today, what we will do is get to hear my brother's story, okay? Which happens to be O'Neal, okay? Y'all saw it on the thumbnail. However, with it, I'm excited to get to hear his story, his salvation story, largely because I know where he is now and the impact that he has with youth and others alike just over the years that he's been serving at our church. But more than anything, I know of some things that we may be able to get into. (laughs) So without further ado, I would like to say hello again to my brother, O'Neal Adelaba. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir, for uh, having me on. And now it's funny, I'm I'm listening to you like, you know some things. Uh, The funny thing is sometimes when you share your story with people, right, people who you're close to, Uh You tend to forget the things that you tell them sometimes. <laughs> so you just said a moment ago, when you're like, you know some things, I'm thinking to myself, what have I told Ricky uh-huh. about my past and uh-huh. about things uh, that I've done before? So I guess we'll dig into it and you'll help me to remember uh, if I do forget anything as it relates to my salvation uh, story. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very well said. Very well said. So we're going to have fun. Y'all already know. However, the first question I love to ask yep. just to get things started is who would you say, who do you say your salvation story speaks the most to? Uh, so my story, I would say, speaks the most to, uh, it's going to sound funny, I'm going to say the in-between, right? Nice. Meaning, um, the... Growing up, or, you know, my life, I can't pretend and say that, you know, I'm a man of the streets, the cold, mean, hard streets. I had to, you know, feed myself and do this and that. Like, that's not me. If I were pretending, if I were to say anything like that, if you ever to hear me say something like that, you can call me out and say, O'Neal, man, you fake right now, <laughs> right? Because that's not me. So I'll say, you know, my story speaks to probably those who might think, I don't have a story, right? Who might feel like, you know... I didn't have like a Saul become Paul type story or, you know, I was, you know, hardened streets and this and that, whatever else type story where, you know, some might feel like I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I don't do bad stuff or whatever. Right. But at the same time, though, God is still speaking to you um, and has things for you. And it's good for us to be, you know, tune in and, you know, tune to those things. So I would say probably I'm speaking to my story speaks to the individuals who might feel like. I'm okay. I, I, I'm doing bad stuff, but I'm not doing, I'm not living like that person or whatever it might be. But yeah, you know, it's still good for us to pause and think about, you know, the purpose that God has for us and identifying when and where change is needed. So yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Now you said that you don't have like the Paul the Saul story. However, what is your salvation story? What did it look like when you actually made that first decision to say, yes, I would love to follow Jesus and mm-hmm. this is the life I want to live. Mm-hmm. So for me, for my story, when I think about, you know, as a kid growing up uh, and where I am today, I've, I guess you can all, you can say I've always been in the church, but I didn't really, I'll say the way that I'm thinking, right? The way that uh, God has kind of, you know, placed in my heart to share, because again, sharing my story, you know, maybe hopefully some, like, feel the same or felt the same, but, Mm. uh, I knew church. I went to church, but I didn't really care for a church. Mm. You know what I mean? Primarily because, uh, because my background, my my upbringing, I'm Haitian. Mm. I was born in Haiti, came here when I was six years old. Um, and my family in Naples, Florida, it's a community where, you know, it's all Haitians, just like almost anywhere. I guess if you think of Miami, when someone goes, like, you know, there's little pockets, right? Mm. So in the pocket in Naples where I grew up, it was just Haitians and, you know, and, and other people too, but primarily like the church my parents went to and everything we did was that. But um, in the Haitian community, for at least for the church that I attended, the kids, they didn't really have like kids ministry Mm. they didn't have anything like you know for teens they didn't have it it was almost like just you sit down shut up don't say anything don't touch anything don't you know and and so then there was nothing there for me Mm. it felt like um what really it felt like is whenever they would have service 
for whatever reason, the pastor would find there was some sort of story about some kid that was bad that week. Maybe some girl who spoke back to her parents or whatever, or a boy who was out there, you know, stealing, whatever it may be. For whatever reason, it felt like that made its way into the preacher's, you know, sermon. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the focus. So a lot of the teens, a lot of the youth at the church felt like, I don't, why am I here? Because mm -hmm. whatever it is that I may have done or have not done or I'm being accused of doing will be the thing that they will be spending the next hour and a half, two hours or whatever it might be talking about. So mm -hmm. I felt like there was nothing there for me, right? Mm -hmm. Also, as a kid, we would go to church Monday, or I'm sorry, morning and evening services and I wanted to watch, like, you know, my cartoons, my The Simpsons in the evening. <laughs> so I hated having to go to church in the evening. Like, I just want to stay home. <laughs> right. I, I have to, you know, this is a whole nother story. But yeah, I remember yeah. growing up, my dad, he didn't speak as my mom did. But um, he was telling me to go get dressed to go to church. And I didn't mm -hmm. want to. So I'm under my breath. I'm like, man, shut up. You know, you can bug me so much. You know, you can he, I didn't think he heard me say for him to shut up, but he heard me. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He, he opened the room door and said, what? I'm going to tell your mom. And my mom came and beat me, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then I still had to get dressed to go to church anyway. So now I'm Wait, crying. time out, time out. The part that caught my attention was he left and told my mom. He went and told on me. <laughs> he told on me. And gave me and gave me, yeah. So that was the thing. So, like, my mom was the disciplinarian. Got you. My dad was, like, the quiet one and whatever else. So he, he, he told on me. Yeah. He snitched. He did. Yeah, my dad snitched on snitched me. Snitched to your mama. Yeah, yeah. His wife. So let me ask this, because your mom being the disciplinarian of the family, yeah. was she, like, also the spiritual leader of the family as well? Um, she, she was, uh, but I will say later on though, you know, my dad, uh, he, he attended church. Part of the thing too, and kind of like what I, what I was leading to a little bit is at times it, it does feel or felt like, and I'll still say now it still kind of feels like they'll do things out of like religion, out of, you know, the practice of doing it because this is what we do. I have mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. thing versus it being relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the thing for me um, where for the longest where I felt like if we're doing things because, you know, of religion, it's just we attend every, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, same things, this and that, you know, whatever process that, you know, was being followed, um, then I, I didn't feel connected to, to God, right, mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. And so then when I became a little bit older or of age to leave the house, so I left, I graduated when I was 17, so it was the summer right before I turned 18, mm -hmm. basically I packed my stuff and left and um, went to school in Georgia for, mm -hmm. uh, for a period, then moved to Tampa with my brother. But um, during that time, you know, I, I did what I wanted to do, okay. you know? Like, you know, I was... Uh, I didn't go to church, you know, I didn't do anything like that, whatever, but... So let me ask this, why, when you went away, did you not go to church? Well, I, I, I didn't go to church, going back to just the fact that I felt like, I didn't feel connected mm. or that I had a relationship with God, right? Mm. Um, I'll say when I was in third grade, you know, for a moment, one service I attended was like a youth service um, that was put together by another church and at that time I will say you know I felt like you know the Holy Spirit you know and and, and I knew that God was with me but then once I went back to my home church in a sense right with my parents and whatever else it was back to the same old same old right so because of that because they didn't have anything for the youth there was nothing that was appealing to me mm. right um, and then I would see Okay, if this is what church is about, just, you know, adults coming and talking bad or, you know, reasons to talk about kids and whatever else, like, I don't want anything, I don't want a part of it, basically. Right. So then when I became a little bit older, like, I was still, you know, 18, 19, 20 and so on, young adult, I didn't, again, going based on my experience, I didn't feel like there, I wanted to, you know, go to church because I didn't think that there would be that, that connection, right? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do, you know crazy bad stuff but i still did you know things mm -hmm. honestly when i think about sometimes 
I did crazier things in high school when I was still living at home. Uh, of course. Uh, of course. Than I did when I was out on my own. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I did a lot of great junior year in high school. That was that was something. Yeah. But I now, did a lot of things then, but yeah, but go ahead. You never said what age were you when you accepted Christ. Well, I ex so when I was as far as actually understanding and accepting Christ into my life, you know, at this point in my life, 19, 20, and so on, I'm not there yet, you yes. know? And I'm a strong believer that God puts people in your life for, mm -hmm. you know, a reason, mm -hmm. right? So my wife, you know, I will say I'll credit her and, and you know, God, of course, mm -hmm. and credit God to putting her into, you know, my life. Mm -hmm. And then because of her, I was able to then, you know, go to church because I wanted to. Well, go to church because she wanted me to. There it is. Which then... <laughs> Truth be told. Truth be told. <laughs> went to church because she wanted me to. Yeah, and yeah. then I'm like, okay, baby, whatever you hello, want. Hello, hello. If you want me to go to church, I go to church. I go to church. If you want me to do this, I'll do that. Huh. Whatever you want. <laughs> I'm, I will do it. To see you smile. But anyway. Oh, so then, okay. That's all you want to say. <laughs> This is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> you fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but because of her, we were able to, or I was able to go to church and, you know, again, first to kind of, you know, make her happy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then second, you know, and most importantly, you know, God was doing a thing, right? And then from there to help me to see, then I actually... Revealing Truth Ministries is where she took me and which is where I've been for 20 plus, you know, mm -hmm. no, 20, like 18 years of been yes. a member of the church wow. and, you know, um, under the teaching of, you know, Pastor Poe mm -hmm. and so on, you know, really heard the word, you know, the way where it wasn't, you know, I don't want to say accusatory or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. but just different, you know, the way that it was being taught what yeah. I grew up with. And then also seeing at this time, I wasn't, you know, anything as it relates to like, you know, the teen ministry and so on and so forth. But I also saw the fact that they had things for and identified the importance of reaching pe those ages. different ages yeah. and having things in place for them. So then it's like, wow, at that time, I was then able to see also the fact that, you know, it's more it's the relationship aspect mm. of it versus it being just, you know, the religious. the religious component of, you know, we do this or everything you do, you're going to, you're going to hell, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you, you, you eat shrimp, you eat crab, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. You, you know, uh, have these thoughts or whatever, you're going to hell or mm -hmm. whatever. But then you're able to see, no, um, th there's another side to it. And the fact that Jesus died for us, right? And because of him, we're connected to, to God and we have that, that relationship. So yeah, so at that time I would say probably the as far as age, I was, you know, like twenty one ish, you know, then um that's when I was able to really see the relationship side of Christianity, which then brought me closer to um to God and you know, which is where I am today. Nice. So the feeling that you had at twenty one accepted Christ in your life and I found a church, you know, 20 plus or 18 years yeah. of being there. What is the feeling now that you have of God as opposed to the feeling you had then when you were younger at your home church? Um, the feeling that I have, I'll say now, of course, you know, I, I, I hear, you know, from, he was speaking to me, you know, of course, when I was younger and such, mm -hmm. and he kept me protected, kept me, you know, during my crazy years of mm -hmm. high school and you know and, and 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 so on so and sometimes when you think back some of the things like you know simple things like i would walk from my house to a park that we would play every day mm -hmm. but walk in like these somewhat shady areas and so on um but he was with me mm -hmm. right you know so i'll say that like i i know and thinking back like you know to see he's been with me the entire time mm -hmm. right but i would say i mean maybe as far as the difference is just the fact that i'm Focusing more and being mindful in um, actively seeking him, right? Mm -hmm. And actively, you know, um, trying to be the example as well for my kids, mm -hmm. right? And then I also um, thinking about, like, my relationship with my parents and um, my upbringing and that, you know, things that I did not necessarily see them do mm -hmm. as it relates to um, the church and, you know, God and so on. 
uh, me, you know, trying to do, uh, be a, I don't want to say a better example, but, you know, try to be the <laughs> example that, you know, my kids can follow and so on. But mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the difference now and then, yeah, I would say probably that, right? Just, I know that he was with me then and, you know, and that he's with me now as well. Um, but just, just being more mindful and, you know, actively finding ways to seek him versus it being, you know, just me trying to be in my own world, do, you know, my own, my own thug thizzle, as mm -hmm. they say, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. No, I dig that. <laughs> <laughs> Your thug thug thizzle, even though you said you didn't, it, it wasn't raised in the hood. I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I was, but see, that's the thing. Is, no, the, the thing is, you know, I, I, I didn't do the bad stuff, but I ran with the kids who did the bad Respect. stuff. Respect. Now, I did, Likewise. I, I did Likewise. some bad stuff, though, I will say, mm -hmm. you know, but primarily... You know, uh, the people who I was, I was in situations at times when I'm not the one who kind of provoked the thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, so I didn't necessarily do bad things all the time, but I ran with bad kids. So since you keep poking this bear, I wasn't going to do it, oh, right? Oh. But you keep poking the bear of these bad things oh, snap. that you've done. Not that I'm going to call it a bad thing. My question is... What is one of the bad things that was done that led you to pray to God to get you out of? <laughs> I wasn't actually leading or poking the bear. I was just saying that. You were. No, you I were. was just saying that no, no, growing no, no, I up. Asked, I asked the question. Oh, snap. Okay. <laughs> What's the uh, statute of limitation or whatever the saying uh, might be or whatever the thing before, is? Before you were married. <laughs> <laughs> Anything before marriage is it's cool. No. Because you're a changed man because you're one with Jessica now. So it's not just you. So then if I get... Anyway, I'm just trying to be fun. All right, no. So as far as one bad thing that uh, I did growing up. So this is many years yes, ago. Correct. Um, no, so, okay. I, I have one. So, growing up in, in Naples, Florida, there was really nothing for the young kids to do. There were things, they tried to set up like little clubs and so on, but they would shut them down because, <laughs> you know, all the kids would want to do is just fight yep. or, you know, have the, uh, the premarital. Gotcha. You know? Fornication. Uh, fornication. It's a family show. <laughs> So that was primarily the things that they um, would do, you know, but um, so for me growing up, let me see, I think this was my, again, my junior year, because my junior year was my wild year um, growing up. Senior year started to like wind down a little bit where I realized, okay, I'm about to be an adult since so I need to chill. Uh, one evening, we, so a group of friends and I, we drove, I think it was like two, three separate cars. We drove to the beach. It was at night. So we drove to the beach. Um, I went to the beach with one reason in mind, which was there was this girl there hmm. that was supposed to, um, what's the word? Please. That I'm Please serve up. Uh, yes. Provide. Copy. You said enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the top the side of fun. The group. <laughs> Wow. So I was there Three for one... Three cars full of guys? Bro, if I tell you... That's okay. That's okay. enough. <laughs> tell your story. Y'all are there at the beach. We're there at the beach for this... I'm there for that reason. Yes. Now, this was probably like... You don't have midnight. to say age. No, no. It was okay. like midnight, like one in the morning, mm -hmm. right? Um. So we're there, and then someone in the group, there are also people who are at the beach, too, like, you know... Uh, couples and whatever else like that's not even a part of our group or whatever so we're there and someone in the group steals a person's purse okay. i wasn't there for that i'm not there for you know theft theft mm -hmm. i'm there for something else mm -hmm. all right so that person steals someone's purse and i hear screaming ah he's got my purse this and that you know so we're looking like who who took who who took what the person who took it ran to us hey I got the person's purse. Let's go. What is happening? Then we start to like run, you know, and run to the cars or whatever. And we're being chased at this point. Huh. Yeah. We're getting, we're being, so, you know, you're running. We didn't park close. It was a good distance, you know, and I ran cross country. So because I ran cross country in high school, they're like, O'Neal, you run to the car, get your car so that you, we can jump in. 
So I'm way ahead of them. And you're driving your vehicle. And I'm driving my vehicle. Oh, that sucks. Bro, I could have died that night, literally. I'm, you know. So anyway, so I run to the car. I jump in my car. And then they come in shortly after. And then they're like, we're getting chased. There are these groups of, um, you know, people, people mm -hmm. chasing us, you know, and we need to go quick. I then jump in the car, throw it in reverse, did not look in the rear view or anything or my surroundings. So someone could have very easily been behind me and gotten run over. Yep. Very, very crazy. Very, yeah. P pop the car in, you know, drive or whatever. And I look in my rear view mirror in this Jeep of these people chasing us. So I'm driving down this area with my lights turned off. Now, normally there's like heavy police presence uh -huh. in the area. But there's no police there at okay. all. Okay. Right? No police there. I'm riding up and down the road, getting chased with my lights off. By a Jeep full of people, angry. By a Jeep full of people, very angry. Ready. Ready to to do, do what something. they have to do. Exactly. Oh, so then um we then drive to the hood, mm -hmm. right? Now the people who were chasing us were of a different complexion or yes. whatever. So okay. they're like, go to the hood, you know, go to the projects or whatever, and they will stop chasing us or leave us alone or whatever else. So I'm flying again, no lights on and so on. Finally make it to the, Time out. To the hood. Why, why were the lights off? Did you think you were invisible? Because obviously they still are chasing you. It's nighttime. <laughs> I did think that they wouldn't be able to see me if my lights were off. Now, mind you, I had a white car at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first time. Clearly. It was my first. This is your first time. <laughs> so I'm flying down like these main roads. Again, literally, you would normally see police, heavy police presence there. Go to the projects, basically. And then they did just that. They stopped chasing us, right? Okay, okay. So, so then the once we reached work. that point, that's when I was able to say, okay, what exactly just happened here? Right, right. Man. Only to find out that the purse that was taken, it was only like $25 in wow. it. So we went through all of this for only $25. Wow. Like, don't don't involve me in this right. ever again. Right. So I will say, kind of connecting it back to yes. the, you know. So what was the, where was the, so the prayer The prayer time? Oh, I was praying the whole time, bro. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, <didn't say> <laughs> I was praying the whole time. And that's the thing. Like, I will say, you know, uh, God will... In that bad time, yes. I will say, you know, was with me, right? Because knowing, you know, again, I I did not ask to be in this situation. Mm -hmm. I asked that to be in another mm -hmm. bad situation. Yes, yes. But then, you know, that's why we should be mindful of the decisions that we make. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes too when you think just that, like, okay, I was attempting to do something that I knew that I wasn't supposed to be doing, but then something else happened, right? Um, so... That's what we should be mindful of the decisions that we make because we don't know what the outcome might potentially be. Right. Where it then creates like a domino effect mm -hmm. of, you know, um, some additional bad thing or whatever yeah. it may be, you know, yeah. uh, added on top of like, you know, I'm just going to steal a little, you know, I'm well, this is my last time, you know, doing X, X, right? And then next thing you know, boom, something else pops on top of it. Correct. My last time having, you know, premarital, unprotected, right? Yeah. Boom, someone gets pregnant. Right. This is my yeah. last time, you know, um, being, a, you know, uh, whatever, jack boy, whatever, yeah. going to steal and rob someone. Boom, you get caught, you go to jail or you, something, you know, you die or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we might think, okay, we're doing this one thing, but then, you know, we have to be mindful because something else might potentially get added on that we didn't necessarily ask for. Right? Hello, hello. Yeah. So with all of that, right, I asked for you to share that story because people see people where they are now yeah. and cannot phantom the thought of the different things that they have been through <laughs> or have done, whether they ask for it or not, right? Yeah. In the midst of where somebody... In things that they have done and where a person is, is grace, yeah, right? Yeah. It's oh, God's definitely. love, it's God's grace, Bro, it's God's hand 100%. on a person's life, right? And so I say that to say, as you said, somebody may be watching this podcast or listening to this episode and they're like, oh man, I, I was doing that yesterday, yeah. but I, I know I shouldn't be doing yeah, this. Yeah. And 
you had the audacity to pray while you were driving with your oh, lights off yeah. with the white car thinking yeah. you were hidden, yeah. right? Crazy. You just stack all of these different things together. But even with all the different things you stack together, you still had the wherewithal to say, I need to pray. Yeah. God, I need you. Yeah. I may not have a relationship with yeah. you that yeah. I believe I should have yeah, or maybe yeah. called out on Sunday. Exactly. But I know I need to reach out to you, God. Like, yeah. And I believe that you're not only going to hear the prayer that I'm praying, yeah. but you're going to be there for me in the time that I need you. Exactly. And I think that part alone is a testament to the love of God, right? Because you even talked about it. You didn't even really have have a relationship with God at that time yeah. but God showed himself enough to you to know I can still pray to him yeah I can still talk to him I yeah. can still make requests and believe that those things that I pray for will surely come to pass exactly. right exactly. and it brought you to the hood you know what I'm saying but I will say this I don't know if you ever thought about it you went there to receive pleasure <laughs> you left on the run Without the pleasure. <laughs> Could it be that God kept you from the repercussions of getting that pleasure? Wow. You know what? I never thought of that. And that's actually very good. And that's, yeah. Because no, I, I heard that. Wow. I saw that. Because I, I was in a place that I shouldn't have been. Yep. And he knew. Yep. Right? That so, could have been worse. That could have been worse. That could have been worse. Wow, wow, wow. Than running from somebody that wasn't going to catch you, right? Your situation, that could have messed up the rest of your life. Wow. Right? You know, because you don't know the ramifications That's of true. being caught on a beach receiving. Yeah, right? Because true. you have to have your pants down at least. <laughs> and so you're exposed, right? And uh, God forbid if kids were on the beach, because then you'd be a pedophile. Oh, bro, wow, you, you just took it there. But no, but I agree with you, just the fact that, Right, you know, I'm just saying how great and damaging that situation could yeah, have been yeah. if the proper authorities that were is to true. catch you in the very act. No, that that actually, that 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 is true. When mm -hmm. you think about, you know, um, yeah, just went there for one thing. Yep. But then, maybe God said... Left expeditiously. Yeah, that you need to leave the situation. Before. So... I will make it for you to exit the situation and I will keep you protected at the same time because, again, I was there and whatever took place, I did not know. I wasn't there for that. I didn't know anything of that. And here I am going literally up and down the street, main area where there's, you know, the beach in Naples and so on with my lights off at midnight, one in the morning, mm -hmm. when typically heavy police presence, but yet there was None. there were no cops there. And then in the hood also, it was a, it's not like right next door, you know, it was a little bit down and I'm driving down this main main street. Now at that time the lights in the streets were on, but my yeah. lights were still off for right. whatever reason. Right. So I'm thinking again, you can't see me. Uh, hmm. uh but yeah you saw the street. <laughs> Bro, I don't know what I was thinking at that time. But yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you, when you, we do foolish things yes. right, without thinking. That oh, is yeah. very true. But yeah, God's <laughs> grace is sufficient, right? 100%. As the Bible says, yeah. where grace did about, uh, or excuse me, when sin did about, grace did much more about. Mm -hmm. And that's what that looks like. That's a snapshot of grace did much more about, exactly. right? But no, like let's, let's continue on with another situation. And a potential another scenario, right? Another one, another bad situation. Well, let's let's oh, see. Snap. Let's okay. see. So no, I'm not gonna hit you or hit for as far as like questions concerned for another story. Okay. But the part I was thinking about is your salvation story is unique because you came into a relationship yeah. with Christ at age 21 after having knowledge of Christ, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna yeah. say. Prior to having a relationship with Christ, accepting Jesus into your life, at 21 you had knowledge. Now, yeah. with the knowledge that you had, um, was there any convictions that you lived or walked around with? Or was it just purely, I'm going to live life how I do and hope they don't find out at church? Meaning at, at the time or like meaning like prior, prior to my you, life prior to, to 21? To 21. Well, I guess um, there's somewhat of a, a disconnect in the sense that I didn't grow up in Tampa. So, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't think necessarily like anyone would find out my, you know, misdoings and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Unless I told them, you know, I was just thinking like even the story of what I just shared a moment ago. I don't think I've ever said that 
to anyone. I don't uh-huh. think I've ever even told my wife that story <laughs> of, well, no, I haven't told well, her that story. You can story. tell her before it airs. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Jessica, let me tell you something. <laughs> At one in the morning, I was with my friends, and we're trying to do three some cars stuff. Deep. Yeah, three cars <laughs> deep. So, and then, but no, I don't think I've ever been told her that. But no, um, no, I think I think just the fact that, you know, just it almost feels like or felt like a fresh start, right? A clean slate in a sense, right? Um, that's why maybe sometimes people will move when they, to another city to start over, right? Mm. To start over maybe, you know, career-wise, start over because they were in a bad relationship and then now they want a fresh start and, and so on. Um, I had a joke I was thinking about. I was going to say, you know, was, you know but anyway, mm-hmm. about women, black women moving someplace. Anyway, whatever. It's, you semi-told the joke, but you don't have I to. I kind of, it's not really a joke, <laughs> but you know, anyway. But yeah, but with all that said, let me yes, just sir. get out of part. there. Yeah, get out of there. But no, so with me moving... And kind of getting a chance to, to to start over, I will say, then, yeah, it, it really gave me a chance to um, probably to help focus a little bit more, right? A little bit better. And probably is what I'll say, just the fact that I wasn't still with the people who I was with when I did those bad things, right? It helped. Just like, you know, if you are trying to change your life, I will say, speaking to those who are watching. Yeah. Um, it's, as words, you know, you can't put new wine into old wine skin in yeah. a sense, right? Where you can't try to do something different while still trying to do the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't try to, to change your life completely and give yourself to God, you know, while still trying to run with the same crowd. Now, you're trying to please two groups to, you know, please your friends and then do the right thing and, you know, please God and, mm-hmm. and, and do the things that you're supposed to do. You know, unfortunately, I'll say at times, wrong, The you know, doing wrong, that voice might speak to some louder than, you know, the right voice. When you think in the sense of like the, the two, like the, mm-hmm. the angel mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. devil or whatever on mm-hmm. your shoulder or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, I want to do good, but doing that bad stuff, you know, feels good. it feels good. <laughs> or like, you know, I remember the feeling of the this and the that or whatever, you know. So I would say, you know, for me, just the fact that I had a chance to have that disconnect, um, that really helped tremendously mm-hmm. with, you know, now identifying who I want to be as an adult, as a man, you know, um, and then from there, who I want to be as a man of God, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so on. So yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. for that, you know, just that separation. If I was still running with the same crowd, you know, I'll say definitely would be a lot tougher, right? Um, and who knows, of course, it would be more uh, backsliding mm-hmm. uh, stories or mm-hmm. part of life, you know. There have been some backsliding or, you know, there were some backsliding things, of course, you know, mm-hmm. like we all make mistakes. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not pretending to be perfect. Right. And hopefully, you know, uh, from hearing a little bit of my story, yeah. now, that's just a snippet now. That's a snippet. That's just a snippet. Oh, that mean there's more. There's but more. Here's but here's the part, you know, here's the so part yeah, that you so spoke to. I'm not perfect. To. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead. You spoke to the idea of how to how you improved your lifestyle, Mm -hmm. which is being able to get away from the people that drug you back to the things that you were doing. Yeah. Right. But more than anything, what I was attempting to get to is like, what kept you in the boundaries, right? Because you could have easily gone astray, I'm going to say, like the others that were in your circle. However, I'm attempting to see if having, you know, even if it was forced knowledge about yeah. God, if that helped to keep you yeah. within some type of parameters, or were you just like scared of your mama, or yeah. was hood just, just not in Well, you? I would say for me, part of the reason, or, you know, the thing, you know, is I like to think beyond the now, right? And I'll say probably a lot of people, they focus on the present and whatever they want to do at that moment. And don't think about the ramification or like the future impact that it might have. Um, and for me, the thing that I'll say kind of helped me to move away from, in addition to that separation, but not wanting to go back to doing certain things, you know, stealing or I didn't really drink or do drugs or anything like that. But, you know, uh, living a whatever crazy lifestyle is thinking about the future, the things that, you know, God would want for me and the things that I want for myself. Right. 
um, growing up, I always knew that I wanted to get married and wanted to have, you know, X number of kids mm -hmm. and whatever else. But then me reaching a point in life where I knew, okay, now I'm going to stop focusing on my present desires or needs or wants or whatever it might be, but really thinking about who, you know, I want to be down the line and, um, and allowing God to move and allowing for those doors to open and yeah, just, you know, thinking beyond just, you know, the, the moment in which I'm living in at that time. So, yeah. All right. No, I dig that. So then you then get married. Well, I won't say you then get married. You start coming to church mm -hmm. thanks to your now lovely wife who, you know, wanted you to be in the church. And now you yeah. are in the church and all that good stuff. Well, we weren't married as of yet. She was my... Uh, my shack mama ah, at that time. Okay, yeah. where'd that name come from? <laughs> Pastor Pope. <laughs> <laughs> shack mama, shack daddy, and the shack babies. Yeah, shack was, baby twins. Yeah, too. shack baby twins. <laughs> <laughs> that was us shacking up. The, how how was that? Like, how were you all shacking up, but yet sitting under teaching that says? Nobody should yeah. be shacking up and like if, if you're living with somebody, yeah, why don't you marry them? Yeah, and I mean, you know, think about the convictions and so on yep. as well, you know. So yeah, that was one of the things that and we knew that or I knew that this was the person for me that I wanted to marry, right? And I'll say we we weren't in church very long while shacking up. So that was the thing that okay. was always, you know, I wanna say we joined the church in two thousand and six. Uh, and well, we got married in 2008, so it was it was That's not bad. Two yeah. years isn't bad. Yeah, yeah, two years. So we joined 2006, and then 2007 I proposed, and then 2008 we got married. So, but no, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we we knew we knew you know we were living in sin mm -hmm. because you know um, we shouldn't have been together as far as, uh, but. Part of the thing, though, for is, I'm not going to say, like, you know, people make excuses to make things okay or whatever, but going back to, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a marrier, that's my wife or whatever, even though on paper it wasn't my wife, mm -hmm. but then also the situation where, you know, I was in or she was in where we kind of then made excuses, like, we can't live on our own because of X. Mm -hmm. We can't live on our own because of Y. Mm -hmm. So then that kind of, like... Brought, you know, brought us together where we felt like okay well we had to continue to live together but not that where we felt forced into the relationship but just you know the reason in our minds of why we need to continue to live together or whatever but but no but anyway um yeah but but we knew that we we wanted better for us and that's not the situation that we wanted forever and um yeah proposed her a year later and then a year later we got married there it is so bam 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 <laughs> question in your lifespan, yeah. was there ever a time that you did a thing or you were a part of a thing okay. where somebody questioned whether or not you were a Christian and you still said, yes, I am, even though you were in the wrong you were doing or in a situation where, quote unquote, Christians shouldn't be doing these things like, mm. was your Christianity ever called out? Hmm, that's a good question. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, post-salvation, I guess we're thinking, like after, you or know. Or in general, right? I mean, because I don't know in your life, have you been vocalizing that you are a Christian as a believer? Yeah. Right? Or was yeah. it just at 21 did it start? Yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, mm -hmm. let me see. Was there ever a time that a situation or a thing... Probably, if anything, maybe... Because I had a time, right? As you think of your time. You got one? Yeah, or what I was going to say, probably, you know, just being out with maybe my wife or something like that. Being at an establishment where some might not feel or feel like a Christian should not be, yeah. right? You know, if you think about, you know, either whether you're going to eat someplace where the women might be dressed a certain way or, um, you know, if you think about, like, going Talking to like a club, club or something... Uh, no, I've heard they got good wings though. But I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you specifically. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like you know, just a restaurant 
Oh, uh, that with uh, so like Hooters. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, I don't okay. want to say the name. You like, know, I was gonna say, oh, okay, yeah, the paying. logo. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not paying but, you know, either, either, yeah, they're, yeah. Oh, but either okay. someplace like that, or yeah, you know, or even going to the the club, or you know, or a lounge. Yes. Right. Um, where they're playing music, but that's you're not played on Sunday. That's not played on Sundays yeah. and so on and so forth. But then you're, you know, you're there at that location. You know, enjoying you know dinner or yeah. time with your you know significant other yeah. or whatever it might be, but um, but yeah, I mean that's that's part of the maybe you know I would say that would be one of the times where you know someone were to look and be like oh like you're here what are you doing here you know so um oh it's they have food it's a place it's a location just because I'm here doesn't mean you know I threw my salvation out the window yeah. and so on but you know that would probably be be it you know if I were to think of situations but yeah gotcha. but what were you gonna say though what was what's yours if you want to share i'll share mine and then we'll we'll bloom from there <laughs> so mine <laughs> was that i was intimately involved with the young lady okay and um i told her like i don't want to do this anymore yeah right and so in her offense and her anger and frustration she okay. called me out oh snap and was like oh you're supposed to be this man of god and a believer because i mean i have said that i accepted christ at the age of seven and i definitely believe i did and i definitely wanted christ to live in my life yeah. and need to live an expression of who god is here yeah. on this earth i didn't have the full revelation of relationship and you know, co-partnership and kingdom of God, like none of that. But I definitely was vocalizing, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday. I yeah, go to yeah. church on Wednesday. Yeah. I know these Bible verses. Like I, I had those markers yeah, checked yeah, off. Yeah. And so while doing wrong, that was called out. She called me out on my, you know, Christianity. But she only called you out when you decided when you, you didn't want to continue anymore? Yeah, yeah. But it was okay prior. Yeah. That, that wasn't both, an issue. You know, I can't speak for her. But, well, but it wasn't brought up. I can say it wasn't brought it wasn't, up. But yeah. However, in the midst of offense and her hurt, that did come out. Wow. And, <laughs> you know, Tom's here's the, the deal. And, you know, um, to those watching and listening, I would definitely say be mindful because I definitely did on my drive home. Yeah. My parents' home. And so yeah. I was in high school telling um, myself as yeah, you yeah. were. Um, but with it, on my drive cool. home, I thought to myself, like, man, I hope my actions with her does not make her look at God negatively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, I can't I don't I don't know where she is in life. But nonetheless, with that, I definitely walked away with that. And yeah. so yeah. with that, I had the perspective of, you know, not really like broadcasting my Christianity yeah. when I was doing wrong and with the idea of I don't want to be the wedge between somebody and God yeah. because of my actions yeah. or our interactions and you know just because of the response I was like oh snap like I messed up yeah. you know but then there's the idea that all people mess up but it's different when you mess up and you're in the midst of your mess up and you're trying to explain how I can still mess up, but God still loves me. I still be an instrument and a vital piece yeah. and part of the kingdom. And so, you know, it's all of that. But um, your answer was definitely more clean. <laughs> it's so. funny, though. I mean, when you, with your situation, sometimes when we think, I mean, let me know. God's with us all the time. He sees the the, the bad things that we're doing, right? But and and you knew the the bad things that you're doing. But then at the same time, though, when someone else kind of like vocalizes yeah. it, then it's like, oh, you know, yep. How dare you say yeah. something yeah. like that? Like it, it it almost hurts or stings even more. Yeah. But then you it should hurt or sting more, you know. When you think about God, yeah. kind of saying those things or seeing, you know, like oh, I thought you were a man of God and this and that. But then you know, we try to like brush you know, hands to the side in a sense and absolutely you know, but wow you, know, you you try to throw out that car you know he's still working on me he's still working on me he's still working on me yeah, like, yeah. that was that was a go-to <laughs> that was a go-to and i <laughs> i'm so past it now so i could say it yeah. because it's not a line i say it anymore but i would say uh he's still working on me and i could work on you no! <laughs> <laughs> That line worked a lot. <laughs> Dang! I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it made you smile. That's gotta be <laughs> oh, Snap! 
I ain't gonna lie. That, that, that is kind of smooth. That was one of my lines. I, I never use it on Crystal, right? Oh. Because I was a changed man once I met her. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, um, yes. And so, but I mean, you know, that's just that. Because I mean, I've been a Christian all my life. <laughs> still getting you? It is. Yes. <laughs> Just thought about it again. So yeah, but go ahead, continue. It worked. Yeah, it worked. You know what I'm saying. But in it all, with it all, I was always with the idea that even though I'm making mistakes, yeah. I'm messing up. Yeah. I still believe God is still with me. Just yes. like the word says, He'll never leave me. Nor like I said, I knew yeah. scripture. Yeah, yeah. And I could recite scripture, and yeah. I could hear from God pertaining to the females that I'm with, or yeah. even saying no. Right. And even I love the scripture and, you know, I love scriptures in general. And so I love the one where it talks about how when we're doing wrong, I'm paraphrasing it, but when we're doing wrong, God will always make a way of escape. And so I can even think back to the times I was doing wrong, which yeah. you had your way of escape. Yeah. It just looked a totally different than yep. the norm. Yeah. But God will always make a way of escape when you're doing wrong. And I could look over if I wanted to. I, I don't often but if i could look over my past wrongs and it's like man i could have left then or yeah i could have not made that phone call or you know back in high school i could have not wrote yeah. that note yeah you know what i'm saying that led me to the point of oh man like dang it i did it again yeah but you know god is just that good because through it all look at us now yeah right we're married men we have beautiful families we have great futures and we make great impact each and every day yeah um and that's only because of the goodness of god the trust in god with us as well as the love of god yeah. for us yeah and his grace that just covers a multitude of sins like his love yeah and um you know with that let me ask you if there was somebody of your home church right maybe let's say if that church just stood in time still and they still did things the same way somebody that's 13 years old going to that church what would you tell them that you would encourage them to follow god have a relationship with god and know that even though there's not anything tangibly for you to do at church, yeah. God still wants you and have a plan for you. Oh, wow. That's really good. Um, so speaking to uh, someone, youth, you know, my age around the time when I was feeling, I would probably say <clears throat> something to the effect that maybe your present is not your future in that uh, just because at that moment you might feel, you know, disconnected or you might feel like God is not with you that's not necessarily the case because he is with you and <clears throat> and find ways for you to you know hear him more right um, maybe unfortunately where you currently go right yeah. because your parents that is their church and you know you might not feel connected but find a way right or find Maybe you could be the first to start the youth group or put together, you know, talk to some kids or whatever it might be to create a thing where you can find just a different way um, based on, how should I say it, maybe where they are, their level of, okay, get a Bible that's in English, if that's mm. the primary language that you speak, um, because your parents might speak Creole, but you might speak English, get one that's in English so you can read and follow get one it doesn't have to be in you know king james version because yeah. who talks like that anymore right. right so get one that's an easy reader version or a new living translation whatever it might be but get one that has words that speaks to you the way that you speak to yourself yes. or whatever you know or speak to others um but just you know yeah not not to give up because also i would share my story of this the fact that where i was at that age which was, you know, I knew of God, but, you know, I didn't feel that connection. So, therefore, I was like, all right, well, this isn't for me. But then, you know, thinking down or seeing myself in the future or, you know, in a sense, I'm them in the future, you can kind of mm -hmm. say. Um, then so I would talk about my story, my testimony and, you know, and how I didn't give up. And, you know, once I reach a point where I wanted to look and, you know... Um, I wanted, and I recognized that it was more than just religion. It was relationship, right? Then I saw the other side 
of Christianity in a sense. And, you know, things got better for me. So not to give up and just the fact that, you know, whatever they see at that moment, however they feel at that moment, that doesn't necessarily have to be their future. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, I dig that. I dig that. Very well said and very well put. And you are definitely an example of that um, because of where you are even today um, through all of the various things that you've done now, even to like wrap up, which, you know, we 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 were very nice and pleasant upon your story. <laughs> things that could have been said. Uh, I will refrain from digging to get all news because it's unnecessary. It's right? unnecessary. Yeah, and that's the past. Time, that's the past. Yeah. In due time and when necessary, salvation. you will make sure that whomever needs deliverance, mm -hmm. you can speak life into them because yeah. of your, you know. Um, so even with that, like, where can people reach you? Where can people contact you to be able to, you know, get help if help is what you're able to give? Um, sure. I mean, I'm on Facebook, of course, mm -hmm. but send a friend request or connect. Um, I'm on Instagram, but I don't really use it that much. Yeah, so you don't have to put it. Yeah, so I don't have to put it. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, Ricky, I'll give you my email, one of yeah. the many email addresses that I have. Okay. Well, it'll be in the description below. We'll All the different yeah, things. we'll put it in and, you know, you can email if you ever want to share your testimony or, you know, want for me to, you know, pray with or for you or if you, um, you know, again, want to connect because, you know, as the word says, iron sharpeneth iron. And like I said, I believe that God puts people in our lives to share, you know, how we got out of a thing mm -hmm. and where we are today and how, you know, our, our and to also, you know, even now, where I am in life or where we are, we might feel moments of where we need to be re-energized, right? So maybe something that you know or you went through that you, I can either, you know, it's not directly or it is directly or might not be directly related to the thing that I'm going through at that moment, but that can help build me up and so on, right? So yeah, so it's good for us to share our testimony and what we're dealing with in order to help um, strengthen each other. So yeah. I dig that. So two last questions, right? And so one of the questions is, when you hear unapologetically Christian, what comes to mind? What comes to mind is living wholeheartedly, 100%, all out, living out loud for God. I like it. Right? And your stride, everything that you do, represents, speaks to, glorifies, uh, it, you know, exemplifies the word. Now, at the same time, though, again, like I said, we're working to be perfect, so we might stumble here and there, yes. right? But at the same time, though, we know that where we're headed and what we're trying to do in life continues to, you know, lift and put God first and, you know, and everything. So the words that we speak, the things that we think, the actions that we, you know, take is and should be for the kingdom. I dig it. And lastly, what is something that God has shared with you that you will either do or should do that we could be looking out for, prayerful with you to do, and excited for you that's along the way? Hmm. Wow. Something that God is sharing. I mean, well, I'm trying to do different things, of course. Yeah. Um, trying to, with my son, you know, get YouTube and such kind of, you know, his channel going. We're yes. doing some... Uh, treasure hunting and you know he loves science so we're kind of doing uh some some science things and you know I, I love that as well and love the time that i spend with them my wife uh we're we're trying to get our business going with uh for training and education and so on that's a little bit of my background as well and her background so trying to get those going and um yeah i mean that's things to look for and that i'm trying to do if and you know to, to pray for and for us and you know add us to your prayer list of course and as uh to keep us uplifted and and as we look to new things in 2023. That's it. Other uh, things to come. Yes. I love it. I love it. Which <laughs> is the year that we are in. And as he disclosed, there are ways that you can reach out to him. Again, we'll put them all in the description down below. And with it all and it all great people, if you have a testimony story that you would want to share, that you believe the world needs to know, that you believe will impact others, definitely reach out to me and we will make that connection. I'll put my contact down below. If you can email me or you can DM me on Instagram, either is fine. I definitely wouldn't recommend Facebook. So where you don't find Odile, you can find me. Uh, so with the great people, I I appreciate you. I love you all. Remember to live life to the fullest. Why? Because others are watching you and God has fullness for you to experience. Until next time, 